Welcome to a new episode of Mind Expanding Russia. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the need for the therapy in psychedelic assisted therapy. So, I have recently went through an online course in education uh, by a company called Cybin. They have created a model called Embark. So the idea behind the model is to create a framework for therapists to conduct the psychedelic assisted therapy, basically. And the model is really good. So I went through the education, I got a certified, so now I'm certified on that uh, model. Unfortunately, it's not like a five-year diploma or anything like that, but uh, the information there and the foundations for the therapeutic approach are really good. So the team consists of practitioners, psychologists, psychiatrists, teachers, and some of them used to work at MAPS and uh, now, well, they work at Cybin or some of them are assisting them in making uh, this kind of educational course working. But yeah, anyway, uh, highly recommend it. It's open uh, access. You don't even need to pay a dollar for it so you can go there, go through it and uh, get verified. Of course, that doesn't mean that each and every single person who ge- goes through it is uh, automatically kind of certified professional. However, the foundation is there. And if a person is kind of emotionally um, mature, I'd say, or, you know, really interested to provide a therapeutic, uh, therapeutic uh, help and assistance, then definitely uh, it is of uh, use to people. Sorry, it's just my dog that requires attention here. Um, So what I was saying here is that uh, that course is really good for understanding like the dynamics within uh, psychedelic assisted therapy. But because of going through that course, I had some really interesting observations, revelations even. And the topic around therapy in general in the context of psychedelics is ambiguous in a sense that some people say that, you know, psychedelics should be accompanied by therapeutic approach. And in some cases, people say that psychedelics in themselves are quite self-sufficient. So the argument is there, and you can find a couple of publications that would kind of protect or quarrel this or that approach. So basically it is, the question is, is therapy required in the context of psychedelics? And the answer is not that simple, <laughs> actually. Although I do have an opinion on that and I'm just gonna park it and probably get back to it in uh, some time. But let me kind of unravel the topic here. So as you already know from what I was saying or probably from your own experience, psychedelics create a really intense emotional experience um, inside people. And it's all happening inside the minds of people. It's not that world is melting or, you know, other people kind of lose their shape or the walls kind of fall or something like that. It is all happening inside one's mind. Moreover, the entire world and the construct of the world of all the social reality aspects is kind of crumbling and falling apart when one is experiencing a high dose of uh, psychedelic substances or rather entheogenic substances. But anyway, so when that happens, a person is getting a very deep connection with themselves and with their deep levels of subconscious. And there, it could be anything. It could be a traumatic episode. It could be something really important, something really insightful that requires attention or just manifests due to an unknown reason. Maybe because it was suppressed for some time and the psyche kind of decided to make it, I don't know, visible or, you know, just putting it to your attention so that it is no longer suppressed, maybe. So feelings can be really intense in that moment. And I've talked about it before and I will talk about it again and again and again. Inviogens should be treated with caution. Uh, They require a set and setting and a lot of preparation. So this is critical and this is fundamental and this is the most important part. So even if you do not have a psychologist or somebody who can provide the support, it is 
absolutely fundamental to do a proper preparation and make sure that you have a sitter. So this is the most uh, intriguing part and maybe not intriguing but difficult rather. So what I'm saying here is that first and foremost in the majority of societies psychedelics or entheogens are a taboo topic. So people are not that comfortable in discussing it out loud. Moreover, if you know you decide to kind of consume for whatever reason, whether it's recreational or therapeutic, and the protocols would differ significantly, of course. But anyway, it is important to have a sitter. So it's hard to find the sitter because, again, it's taboo. It's not legal in many cases, and of course, there are a lot of underground people who can provide provide that type of services. And in the US, I think you can even find a website where you can find a sitter, unlike in EU or other countries, for instance, because again, of the legality of it and the kind of stigmatization of the topic in general. However, for the first experience, it is indeed critical to find a proper sitter. So please don't do a entheogenic experience on your own without due preparation it could be dangerous it could be harmful for your psyche and not only it could be like physically harmful if you decide that you can fly and you're in a tall building or decide to cross a road on an intense a crossroad or something like that so please be mindful about that and remember at all times that preparation is critical set and setting is critical as well so going back to the therapeutical question of whether or not therapy is required so therapy per se is not necessarily required in my view however the support is fundamental so there are a couple of articles that been discussing this topic in more details but the general consensus is there is that support is required and even though substances on, on themselves they are extremely powerful and potent and they can affect human psyche without an external intervention um, let, let's say Still, the material that manifests, the intense feelings that kind of show up, the subconsciously suppressed aspects of one's personality may kind of intensify and make people feel very tough. Let's put it this way. Regardless of whether it's a macro or microdose. So even if somebody decides to start with microdosing, for instance, the thing about psychedelics or entheogens is that the material will manifest. So remember, psychedelic is mind manifesting, right? So mind will manifest regardless of whether you want it or not. So you need to be prepared for that type of shit. And if you are doing it on your own, if you do not have any type of support, if you do not have a psychologist, if you do not have a friend or somebody who can help you and support you, you may find this experience really difficult because you can find yourself one-on-one -on -one with something really dark that's been there with you for some time, many years even, and if there's nobody there to help you deal with it, you may not be able to deal it. You may not be able to deal with it by yourself. Hence, support is required. So when we're talking about the psychedelic assisted therapy, basically in the majority of cases, it is uh, what's called uh, behavioral uh, shit. I forgot the terminology here. But anyway, basically it's talk therapy, it's behavioral cognitive therapy, if I remember correctly. I mean, the therapist is the person that conducts the trial. If we're talking in the context of clinical trials that are happening around the world in US and Europe and other countries, the, the role of a therapist is mainly to be there and to act as a support. So the focus of a person going through the trial or going through the entheogenic experience is focused inwards. So you probably remember me mentioning and generally the therapeutic protocol requires people laying like horizontally on a couch, sofa or bed covered with the warm blanket and the eyes covered with the eye shades or mask or 
I don't know, big earphones or <laughs> just earphones that are quite comfortable and have the specific music playlist in place that helps and assist the therapeutic journey, let's call it this way. And the journey varies depending on the substance. It could be like several dozens of minutes. It could last for hours. Typically, in the majority of cases, it is either psilocybin or MDMA, the effects of which last for like three to five hours, depending on the dose, depending on the intensity and the level of the emotions that people um, experience during that uh, trial. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, so the thing here that I'm trying to kind of put together is that a person who is in charge of therapy is just basically sitting there and making sure that the person who is going through the therapy under the influence of the substance is focused on inward world and is in a safe environment. So as you probably remember or not, let me remind you, Entheogens are meaning enhancers. So when somebody experiences this by themselves, they can say that, you know, the meaning of some specific idea is very significant to them and they kind of start to understand the big connectedness of the world and the creatures and the entire ecosystem and whatnot. So the meaning is being enhanced and is being kind of placed in certain topics or categories of mental constructs, let's put it this way. The therapist's role there is not to create additional meaning, is not to help a person direct a, you know, way that the train thought or way of thinking towards a specific kind of direction, unless it is what it was originally kind of talked through and uh, agreed upon consensually uh, by both parties. So, theoretically, therapist there is not to be an active participant of the process. Therapist is there to support and help person with the integration. So, if you think about it, there are three aspects to it. And if you go back to the historical approach of entheogen use in, you know, relationships with humans, so there's been a three-act play so it's submersion, search, and resurrection. And you can call it in different names, the meaning's pretty much the same. But if you kind of put that three-act structure towards the psychedelic-assisted therapy, so basically the immersion is preparation. And preparation is fundamental, it is absolutely required. And if there is a person in place who is doing the, the sitting, the, the therapist, or a coach, or mentor or shaman or guru or you know just a friend who has relevant experience the bond needs to be there the level of trust needs to be established the person needs to know everything or you know the maximum amount necessary information required around what's going to happen to them under the influence of the entheogen so this is the preparation the first act the second act is basically the trip <laughs> let's put it this way so the trip needs to be, again, prepared and ideally with the sitters so that the person who is there to help and assist will make sure that, it, you know, the environment is safe, that the emotions are contained, that everything's all good, but that person must not, under any circumstances, try and put any ideas in the mind of another person. I got a good analogy for you here. So you probably remember that type of stuff from the uh, movie called Inception. This is from Kerala, by the way, in India. Um, so the thought can be placed inside someone's mind and it can influence people significantly. So it is important that person who is doing the therapeutic support is not placing any ideas that they think are important for such person. So this is really the most tricky part because when person is under the influence of the endogens, they're in a very vulnerable state. They're in a very suggestible state. And then in that state, they can be emotional and physically abused. And this is a problem because there aren't many licensed therapies in the world. And of course, the majority of them are somewhere there in the United States. 
So, of course, the kind of vast majority of people who provide services of uh, different type of psychedelic assisted therapy or coaching or sitting, they're not licensed therapists, although, of course, there are some exceptions. But even if they're licensed therapists, it doesn't mean automatically that they will be perfect and not impose any of ideas that they have on the patient. Because even... In the clinical trials, there's been cases of uh, physical and mental abuse uh, between the patients and the therapist. So, unfortunately, people are fucked up as human beings. And, you know, uh, some people will, gonna, will do stupid shit. And uh, it is hard to say up front, like, whether or not that person is going to do something bad to somebody... But it is critical to kind of establish that there is like level of trust between person who consumes and trips and the person who sits and supports. So this is the second part, the, the trip. And during that trip, of course, the entire direction of focus should be uh, inwards of the, of the patient going through the entheogenic experience. The third part is probably the most critical. It is called integration. So integration or resurrection or, you know, however you call it, or parachuting to reality. Typically what happens is that people kind of gain insight. They understand something that they didn't understand before. They get a fresh perspective. And then, you know, they get back to the real world and the real world is there. It was there prior to experience, it is there after the experience. So, from that moment, it is highly critical to make sure that the insights and the information gathered during the trip was somehow integrated in real life. So, when I'm talking about the microdosing as well, so that type of insight may emerge during the c consumption over the course of, you know, like regular life and the daily life. And if there is nobody to help integrate that knowledge or that insight that appeared from the deep level of subconscious, it could be problematic for a person to be able to process that stuff because it could be hard. So integration is critical. And if you are able to do it by yourself, that's good for you. I mean, I'm doing it for myself, but I do use the help of a therapist. And it is, well, probably part of luck, I guess. Uh, it was good that I was able to find a therapist who's not stigmatizing in the audience. Because, again, not all clinical professionals, medical professionals are that open-minded. And some people still do think that, you know psychedelics are bad they can fuck up your brain and shit like that of course they can but if you're cautious if you know what they are you're not going to stigmatize so what i'm saying here is that it is highly critical and important to find a person who will be able to provide you with help with i don't know support be there for you and help you integrate the knowledge that you've gathered during your experience. I don't know why the fuck am I talking about it, but I thought that this is highly important and relevant because I went through the, the education system by Embark or by Saibin rather, and I went through a couple of articles and it made me think that, you know, there are a lot of people out there who use psychedelics recreationally and they don't integrate the knowledge. They do it in a kind of harmful manner or you know they don't do it properly and moreover there are people who can provide support and help to you know people who are doing in the in the first place but they don't do it so i guess what i'm trying to say here is that again it's critical to stop stigmatizing the topic first of all second of all in theogens require set setting preparation and a sitter a person who would be there for you and help you integrate the knowledge so make sure to find one make sure to find a person you can trust make sure that person won't impose any ideas on you and help you integrate that knowledge that's it for today i got a call to catch so thank you for watching 
Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and put your thoughts in the comments. I want to hear what you're thinking because I've been doing it for a while and I do lack feedback. I do need it. So please, please, please put some feedback in there. I'm eager to hear your thoughts because I'm trying to navigate and understand like which specific topics I should talk about more or less. Thank you for watching and until next time.